Hi there, and welcome to TikTok Effect House. In this tutorial, we'll learn how to use a 3D face shape to create a customized face mask effect. We'll also learn how to control lighting resources with visual scripting to apply animated lighting effects on the 3D face mask. 3D face shape is dynamic and will follow facial expressions and movement in real time. You can create customized 3D face mask effects by designing your own texture assets. The following knowledge will be covered. Adding 3D face shape, applying PBR material, assigning textures, editing lighting resources, controlling lights with visual scripting. Before we begin, download the 3D face mask package and let's open the unfinished 3D face mask project. When we open the project in Effect House, you'll see that all the necessary assets have been imported into the Assets panel. Before we use our assets, we need to create a 3D face shape entity. Do this by clicking Add Object, highlighting Face Effects, and selecting 3D Face Shape. A default 3D face shape will then be added to the hierarchy, and you can see it in the Preview panel. Over in the Assets panel, a new material called Face Paint will also be automatically generated and attached by default to the 3D face shape. Face Paint is a built-in material that allows us to quickly swap patterns that will appear on the face. For this tutorial, we want to make an effect that responds to environmental lighting. So we'll need to use PBR material instead of Face Paint material for the 3D face shape. Go to the Assets panel and click Add Asset. Navigate to the Material list and select Standard PBR to create a new PBR material. Then rename the material to 3D Face Mask underscore Matte. Now we're ready to put the material on our 3D face shape. Go select the 3D face shape entity, find the component in Inspector, and swipe the material to 3D Face Mask underscore Matte. We can see the PBR material applied to the 3D face mask in the preview panel. Next, let's apply textures. Navigate to the Assets panel and click on 3D Face Mask underscore Matte to bring up its properties in the Inspector panel. In the Albedo section, if we check the box next to Texture On, the Texture field will become available. Clicking this field will open the Asset pop-up. Let's select a 3D Face Mask Base Color Texture from the pop-up window. We can then repeat this process for both the Normal and MRAO properties like so. Now we can see the material textures on our 3D face shape in the scene and preview, but the mask is not transparent, so we need to set the blend mode of the material. Scroll down in the Inspector panel to Render State 0 and change Blend Mode to Multiply. Now we can see that the 3D face shape is rendering correctly in both the scene and the preview. Now, let's play with the lighting setup in the scene. By default, there is already one lighting resource in the scene, but we'll want to add a second one to create a color changing effect. Click Add Object, navigate to Scene, and select Directional Light. Let's rename one light source to Face Lighting 1 and the other to Face Lighting 2. For Face Lighting 1, go to the Inspector panel and find the Directional Light component. Set the intensity to 1.2 and color to hex code 4BFBF8. For face lighting 2, set the intensity to 2.9 and color to hex code F568E3. Feel free to experiment with the color and intensity parameters of the lighting resources and let your imagination run wild. Now that the lighting parameters are set, let's animate the motion of the lighting resources to add a dynamic, shimmering effect. To control the rotation of our lights, open the Visual Scripting panel by clicking the button in the top left. Next, let's add nodes for each of our lights. Select the light source from the hierarchy and then navigate to the Inspector panel on the top right. Find the rotation parameter under Transform and click the plus button to select Set Rotation. We can see that the node was automatically created in the Visual Scripting panel. Repeat these steps for our other lighting sources as well.
Now we'll add more nodes to program the movement and rate of the lighting sources. We'll use getTime function to animate light rotation in real time. Right-click the Visual Scripting panel and type getTime to search the node, then click Add Node. Next, we can use a sign node to limit our light's rotation by right-clicking the panel and searching Sign, and clicking Add Node. The value of sign is between negative 1 and 1, but this will be too small for the angle, so let's add a Multiply node as well. We also need to convert the variable into Vector3 to match the rotation's data type by using a Combine node. So search Combine node and add it to the panel. Click the data type on the Combine node and set the output data to Vector3F. Now let's link the nodes together. Link the trigger from the Update node to the Set input of Face Lighting 1. This will tell your node to update every frame. Next, link the following together. Get time to sign. Sign to value 1 of multiply and change value 2 of multiply to 50 so the value will be limited between negative 50 and 50. Then connect multiply output to the first value of combine and the combine output to the rotation of face lighting 1. Now you have controlled the x axis of the rotation of face lighting 1. Let's add another Multiply node to control the y-axis of the rotation. Link the sign output to value 1 of the second Multiply. Change value 2 to 60 so it will limit the change between negative 60 and 60. Then link the Multiply output to the second value of Combine to control the y-axis in rotation. We have now completed the movement of Face Lighting 1, and you can see the result in the preview panel. Let's set the same logic nodes to control the rotation of our second light source. This time we will use cosine math instead of sine to map the time variables and control rotation. Right-click the panel and search cosine, then click Add Node. Copy and paste the Multiply and Combine nodes from the first light. Change value 2 of Multiply to negative 60 and negative 70. Then link them together. Once we have all our nodes, link the trigger output of the first light to the set input of the second light. Our final product will look like this. Finally, let's adjust the MRAO value to achieve a shiny, metallic effect in our material. Select the 3D face mask matte material, then navigate to the Inspector panel to tweak the metallic and roughness parameters within the MRAO setting. Try setting metallic to 0.7 and roughness to 0.6. Refresh the preview and voila! We can now see our completed light effect in the scene and preview. Feel free to go back and tweak your variables to explore all the different features Effect House has to offer. Thanks for watching the 3D face mask game tutorial. We can't wait to see what you make.